If you want to see a video about replacing the sprocket, I'll provide a link to that in the description below. This video is about leaky motor seals. So you can see it continues to leak. I've got my bowls there to catch the drips as they fall, and it just does not seem to be getting any better. Before I invest in any seals, I want to take a closer look at this drive motor. To do that, I need to get to the back of it. And how do you get to the back of the motors, you might be wondering? Well, it's actually through the operator platform, so right there. We are going to remove the operator platform and then get essentially under the radiator, which is where these motors can be accessed from. I'm going to start by removing this panel here in front of the radiator, which is really, really easy to do. Just swing back your vinyl pads here, and lift up this, and then normally there's a couple of screws holding this in place, but uh, those are bolts, but those bolts are actually missing, which means this just lifts right out. Definitely need to clean the radiator, uh, but for today we are focused on the hydraulic motors. So the next step is to take out these two bolts right here, so they take a 916 socket. With those two bolts out, this platform should lift out. There we go. And this little tab on the back is what trips the switch uh, that tells the machine that someone is on the machine. There are tabs and springs. Okay, the next step is to remove this plate, uh, which is essentially the base of the operator's platform, and it's connected to the machine by three isolators. Uh, one large one right back here in the back, and then a small one on each side. So I'm going to try taking these bolts out on the side first. They are also 9 sixteenths. With those side bolts out, the the pins essentially that they were holding in will come out, but before I take them out, I'm gonna try breaking loose this large center bolt. It is a half inch bolt, so it takes a three quarter inch socket. And to get to that socket, I am gonna use a couple of extensions here and my breaker bar to go just under the platform. like so. See if I can break this loose. There we go. Tell you what, this, this extra long breaker bar is so nice. So handy. So handy. There we go, there is our bolt. Looks like a fine thread half inch bolt. So now this platform is free. It can pivot up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pull these pins out now, or try to. Yep, that one's, that one's coming. It's coming out as well. Interesting little piece there. Okay. And that pivot is out as well. So now it looks like I'll just pull this straight out. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to set it back in actually for a second. So the switch, the present switch uh, on the back of the platform is tethered to the machine with a cable, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the two little nuts down there um, so that that switch can stay with the machine. So these two nuts right back here are the ones I'm talking about, and they take an 11 30 seconds socket. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out with the switch attached as far as I can. So these little bolts are actually machine screws and have slotted heads on the back, so I'm going to try to reach around there with my stubby screwdriver and hold the heads while spinning the nuts. There we go. 
I just felt my screwdriver catch the slot. Now this platform is kind of precariously half on, half off right now. The hardest part is getting your slotted screwdriver into the slot of the screw when you can't see it. Okay, so then I'll pull the switch off the back. And now this platform should slide out. Watch your fingers. There we go. Pretty, pretty stout platform. So this is one thing that I actually really like about the Vermeer skid steers, and many people do, is the robustness of their operator platform. So you can see that over the years that this machine has been in operation, there have been many impacts to the bottom of this platform. And the operator probably uh, did not feel it very significantly uh, and definitely did not get thrown off the platform or anything like that, which can happen on some other brands that have uh, very light, uh, thin, flexible platforms. Uh, but now we can see there's the switch that we just disconnected. There's the rubber bushing. I guess I, I did not even need to take that off because it was not bolted to the machine on the backside. So note, do not, you do not need to take this off. So now that the operator station has been removed, I need to remove this plate right here, this rectangular plate, and it's held on by one, two, three bolts. These bolt heads are all 916. So now the whole plate is kind of hinging on the top. And before I lift it off and drop it down, I need to be mindful of this presence switch here, which is fished through the plate, and also the oil drain line for the engine. So it should be attached to this little access panel that's on the bottom of this larger plate. So now our panel is down and you can see this is the oil drain line for the engine. And then this is that presence switch harness. So once I popped it off there, I was able to find a little more slack for both of those so that I was able to drop this down without any problem. Um, but you can see that it is kind of dirty in there. Um, and looks like there's probably been a little bit of oil spilt in there over the years. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up uh, so that I can more easily work in this area. That was a lot of dirt for being behind just one panel. Okay, so now that it's clean, I can see that uh, this connector here is for the presence, presence switch. It's a Deutsch connector. Hey, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of penetrating oil on this connector, and I will wipe this off after I get it apart. Sometimes those seals just need a little bit of lubrication. I think there might still be some dirt underneath this tab. It's not letting me get it down all the way. Okay, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so now I can pull the switch out from under here, poke the harness back through the grommet. There we go. And you can see the, the switch, it's a Honeywell limit switch there. It's still in good working order. Uh, the harness has seen better days, but amazingly none of the individual wires are broken. It's just the outer jacket has been split. So I will uh, probably put some electrical tape on that and uh, put it back in service. So now we need to get the oil drain hose out of the way. And I'm gonna try taking this access panel off. I already broke this bolt loose a few minutes ago. So I wonder if this panel 
will actually slide back through this opening? Uh, and the answer is yes. Perfect. Thank you, engineers, who thought of that. Now I can set this plate aside. So now we have a fairly clear view of the underbelly here. So this is the right hand drive motor. That is the left hand drive motor. And that is the brake cylinder for the parking brake. And that is how you remove the operator's platform. So the reasons you would need to do this would be if you were replacing the presence switch, if you're working on the hydraulic drive motors like I am, or perhaps you just need to clean out the bottom of your mini skid steer. The major components are the black operator's platform, that's the floating part, the base weldment, and the access cover uh, to the underbelly of the mini skid steer. You also need to remove, or at least I find it very helpful, to remove the radiator cover that's just held on by two bolts. The small components uh, that come off with this are two bolts for the black platform, the side tabs for the black platform, the springs, two more bolts that hold these uh, keepers or pins in, and then the two screws for the present switch. Uh, you do not need to take these off in hindsight, but I did take off the, the large bolt for the uh, rubber isolator or cushion. And then the three bolts for the access panel, the one small bolt for the oil uh, drain access cover, and then the switch itself. The tools you need, or at least the tools I used, were um, my M12 half-inch impact, which is basically the lightest duty half-inch impact you can buy, um, the long breaker bar, two half-inch extensions, uh, the small um, slotted screwdriver for the present switch screws that you can get back behind the switch, uh, the small ratchet, or you could use any any socket tool really, but uh, it's an 11 30 second socket. This small screwdriver was helpful for getting the Deutz connector uh, apart for the present switch, and then these four sockets. So two of these are just 9 16 It's just basically long and short. This is a three quarter inch socket for that rubber cushion, which again, you really do not need to remove. And then this is a half inch impact socket for the oil drain cover. It's really a pretty easy job, especially uh, once you see what to do. Again, you do not need to take off that rubber isolator. Um, the hardest part in my case was getting that switch off because I had to reach back around. But in reality, there's enough harness that you should be able to pull this weldment off the machine, or at least away like a foot or two. Um, but my harness was, was caught up in the hydraulic hoses underneath, and so I could not pull the switch out. So I'm gonna put that switch back in um, and try to route the harness in a way that it'll be easier to get out next time. So I, I hope this helped you. I'm going to continue with the job of servicing the hydraulic motors, but that's going to be uh, part of another video. So if you want to follow along, uh, subscribe or just catch my next video. But thanks for watching.